All right, thank you so much for staying with Daybreak. Let's talk about President's Chama Offensive on Uhuru to do business. Suluhu brings the solution to trade barriers. That is what we're about to talk about right now, and she was in Parliament yesterday. Gerard, I'll start with you. What did you make of the President's visit? I'm happy I, I was there, and uh, that was excellent presidential speech. Uh, it has been long. It was so refreshing. Uh, in Kenya, we are used to presidential speeches that are very threatening. But yesterday, she was persuasive. She was motherly. Two things that I, I can just make quickly is, one, he, he talked about uh, diplomacy, which we, was was, we were doing very badly when uh, uh, the late John Pombe Makufuli was in power. Number two, he spoke about uh, that Tanzania now, and we are happy that Tanzania is scientifically now uh, fighting COVID and they have put scientific measures, which is very impressive, going against uh, what is uh, what uh, the, 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 his predecessor, John Pombe Makufuli, did. Number three is that the ease of doing business, and I think that is very important for us. Yeah. But unfortunately, of course, when the Serena business talks happened, if you saw some video of some... Uh, some business person who wanted to invest in the country and there are so many bottlenecks and uh, bureaucracy within Kenya. And, and, and finally, uh, it is very impressive that uh, Samia Sulu Hassan, uh, Her Excellency, is, is taking a different trajectory systematically from the policies of intro, I, I, intra or in, intra of the, the way that Tanzania used to operate under John Pombe Makufuli. So, so, so I, the, 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 the address was refreshing, and uh, we, we hope that she will rise to the occasion where now the ceiling, the women can always go at par in terms of running the country. And, and we are, I'm happy that uh, she's the second head of state post uh, Constitution 2010, that she has had a privilege of addressing the joint. And one interesting thing also, uh, which we realized that uh, she admitted that she has been following uh, parliamentary proceedings. You know Kenya is, of course, beacon of democracy. It's one of the serious economies within the East Africa region and Central Africa region. But, but I think going into the future, I think significantly the issue of signing a deal of, she highlighted issues of infrastructure, which is significant in, in terms of ease of doing business. And one, one important thing that I noticed is the signing deal of uh, liquefied gas. Uh, I know uh, of, uh, I think, number of, of uh, I know, no, around 40% of Kenyans now use gas. And it is good for our environment because now when you use gas, we can no longer destroy forests and many other. So our speech was refreshing. It was presidential. And uh, we were happy because there were no threats issued like the way we are used into Kenya. Okay. And we wish our well. Otiene? First, looking at the pictures, it's really reassuring, uh, even for the optics. First, in terms of uh, women leadership, and secondly, in terms of the relations between us and Tanzania. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, this visit was a great milestone in diplomacy. Uh, I also think that it marks the, the proper beginning of restoration of true trade uh, relations between the two countries. And lastly, I think that uh, she is really a good leader mm -hmm. uh, with a sense of humility and humor yeah. <laughs> that sometimes do not come easy. Thank you. <laughs> I, I tweeted uh, when she got here, and I'll read my tweet. It yeah. says that you have to admit that Tanzanian President uh, Silu Sami is quite likable. She has charisma, comes out as a very smart person, and Kenyans have taken a great liking <coughs> to her. Yeah. She ignites something in all of us, and we love it. And I welcomed her to Kenya and told her when she gets time next time to come to Machakos. Yeah. She's, uh, as Otieno Mola said, diplomacy has changed and she handles it in a very different manner. Mm. Yes, we still have issues with our trade in Tanzania, but for me, what is important is that we need to work together because Tanzanian is our chief trading partner and our people are looking for employment. If the economy grows because of our trade with Tanzania, it's very good for our millions of youth who are sitting at home without jobs. So I'm thinking in terms of this relationship, it's not just friendly, it's not just friendship. Mm -hmm. It's about money, and our people need to make money, and we can make money from our trade in Tanzania. But I think one of the things she said is that uh, we are tied together. We are neighbors, we are friends. What happens in Kenya affects what happens in Tanzania. And she says it very well, if I quote the newspaper, she says, Hata wanyama wetu wanapata mimba Kenya na wanazalia Tanzania. I think talking about the migration of the older beast. Yeah. That's how tied we are with Tanzania. There's very little difference between the two of us in terms of culture and as a people. So I'm very happy and yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting her one of these days 
and talking to her because uh, now we'll see a different feel between the two countries. Okay. Uh, uh, Trevor, I, I look at it a little differently and um, uh, looking at, at it differently from our own internal uh, perspective and and I, I, would, I would just be saying uh, to, to our leadership that what we just need to realize after the experience of Suluhu here yeah. is that competition has just gotten tougher for mm -hmm. us, for, 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 for our country, Kenya, in uh, regional politics, in, uh, in, in placement of, uh, of, of uh, preferred uh, trade partners internationally. Uh, because, um, uh, you know, Trevor, if you look at the what you call the term offensive that, that uh, the president of Tanzania unleashed for the two days when she was here. It's had a huge effect. Yeah. But, but uh, w w one of the things that we we'll need to realize is that that offensive is not only reserved for Kenya. It's going to be unleashed in Rwanda and, uh, and Uganda and in the UK and, uh, and in the whole, whole world, wherever she goes. And that tells you that uh, what we need to tell ourselves and remind ourselves is that you know, the, the, the privileges and the exclusive preferences we've had uh, may have just had another new door opened. And, and I must congratulate uh, President uh, Samia Suluhu uh, because I listened to her for all the occasions she was here and, and got to address our people. One, she's an extremely fluent communicator and she's easy, you know, in her communication. She's convincing, she's, she's charming. And, and, and once you can, you're able to carry people's hearts, then their minds follow uh, very, very easily. Uh, and and you, you saw the conquest she managed to, uh, to, to, to get from here. You know, uh, people are even in parliament yesterday were telling her that people are saying, don't go back, stay. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, we want you to be, to be with us longer. And, and uh, so I think um, what we need to, to do are two things. First is to take advantage of all, all the promises uh, that she's made, which I believe are going to be realized uh, alongside what our president also, uh, you know, promised in, in cross-border and uh, inter inter-country trade. Uh, and that is going to help us a lot ourselves, if indeed it's carried, uh, carried forward. I, I, was, I was happy when I had some of the issues being raised because um, as a member of parliament, I've had an opportunity to interact with most of our traders. And there has been various complaints, for example, at the freedom with which uh, goods from Tanzania have been able to cross into our country and come and find uh, their, their, their place in our markets. Actually, Trevor, if you go to our main market here in town, Marigiti, yeah. as it is called, most of the trucks that, are, that offload foodstuffs there are yeah. trucks from Tanzania. And then our people have been complaining that when they, they, they want to do the same across uh, the Tanzanian border, mm -hmm. they've been unable Become to do difficult. that. Uh, there, there has been a big complaint by uh, two operators, indeed, and you had that being raised, that uh, when you operate a tour company and you go to Tanzania, and you have your tourists from Kenya, when they get to Namanga border post, they are forced to offload and relinquish their, their, their guests to their, to, the, to their Tanzanian counterparts. Yeah. Well, the opposite is, 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 is untrue when you come to the, to the Kenyan uh, side. And, and I think... Addressing some of those things is going to, to, to in, in, in a big way, to, to, to help our, our business people here okay. in, our, in our community. Uh, I just hope yeah. then that uh, eventually, as, as uh, you know, all said yesterday, that it's going to be sustained, yeah. that, that uh, there's going to be goodwill to follow it up, and uh, eventually uh, we, we, we can have a better country. I believe as a country would have more to benefit yeah. if that is uh, if that is realized uh, mm, because okay. our people are more ahead we have got more business people yeah we've been uh, we're in, in wider uh, regions i, I think um, okay. uh, we, we're happy finally all right let's bring up some of the feedback that we have there's a lot of them i'll try to go through them really quick before i take closing remarks here from my guests <laughs> let's see what they're saying here on twitter travel and at citizen tv kenya is the hashtag day break says dear travel media there is no way otenda molo can be removed without the knowledge of raila odinga especially during this critical conversation around BBI. Jacom is purely briefed on such matters. That's from Rain Asano. Flavian Mulama says, typical Kenyan politics, the handshake seems to have transmitted the, the Jubilee Party intolerance to ODM. Okay? J.S. Gitali says, Andre Botienda Molo is playing safe. There is no way anybody in ODM can touch him without the blessings of the party leader. Trying to exonerate him is a lie. ODM is simply burning. This is the beginning. Okay? 
Sigu Hongo says, I truly like the insights of Dr. Tiende Amolo. What a show of maturity. How I pray all our legislators could embrace the act of owning up their predicaments, devoid of unnecessarily fighting back through ways of throwing tantrums at people and spewing venom. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see what else you're saying here really quick. It's all about the messages, right? Victor Peter says, my problem with Honorable Tiende Amolo is why suggest those amendments now? We had the bill pass in county assemblies, and then we had to, enough time to make the changes. Why wait until it's in the final stages? Time is of essence now. All right, let's see what else you're saying. Jenga Wakungu says, Tindamolo is an ODM diehard, but is always principled and very well articulative and sober debater. With, with his, uh, for ODM to, for, to demote him, doesn't demote his well-structured perspective on matters of national importance. I always envy Otiende Amolo. Cheer up, brother. Okay? Isaac Mudusi says, ODM must go slow on Orengo and Otiende. Humanity and mistakes is inseparable. A solid national political party needs a solid mind that can take care of situations when called upon. All right. Uh, Still oh, another one here. On the Bob Otino Wino says, government should shut down the company where Indians were detected with the India variant disease. I'm a resident of Kisumu and afraid because the protocols aren't adhered to in this part of the country. Okay. Let's see. Let's take your closing remarks now at this particular point. I know there are quite a number of them that are coming through, but because of time, we have to stop there. Chair I'll start with you. Very quick closing remarks. Uh, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I want to say that uh, our d the BBI debate will be ongoing in the Senate and I hope that I will be able to of course I did my few minutes I had promised to do four hours but I just highlighted <laughs> submissions <laughs> when I submitted. but uh, Trevor I yeah. will be uh, hopefully at the committee of the, the whole of the committee stage I'll be able to move uh, amendments to the to this constitutional BBI bill especially to protect farmers, to protect the youth, and uh, to ensure that uh, we protect judiciary. So we hope uh, the ruling of the speaker later in the day or early today morning, when we resume our special sitting from 10 a.m., will allow myself, Senator Irungo Kangata, and Senator Eno Kwambua yeah. to be able to move constitutional. I mean, because I believe finally that uh, the, the parliamentary, the, the parliament uh, is not supposed to exist in vain and it's not supposed to be salutary in process and uh, finally to say that uh, the future of this country belongs to all of us let us continue to adhere to the covid protocols yeah. so that we don't need to make uh, extreme containment measures because uh, we need to be to ensure that when we observe these protocols it will allow us to continue with our daily life yeah. but also urge my colleague leaders that let us desist from holding meetings Mm -hmm. uh, even if we have to attend a function, especially for Arambis and many other things, there are, nowadays there is Mpesa, there are many ways you can attend virtually, so that we also protect our people. After, okay. you know, politics is on a season, but we need lives back, okay. so it doesn't make sense. And finally, to urge the Ministry of Health to, to be vigilant and yeah. to do their work, uh, and also ask county governments also yeah. to also... But, but finally, I want to appeal to the National Treasury to release funds. Okay to the county government so that they can be able to handle the situation. There okay. are many workers that have not been paid. Uh, we see counties are also struggling with the surge of uh, COVID uh, infections in the counties. Yeah. So they need money. Uh, and I think they are over 70 point something billion. Mm -hmm. So I think the National Treasury should give counties money so that they oh. can do their job. All right. I'll, I'll be quick. Mine are just uh, six weak points. The first one is uh, uh, going where you finished about COVID. Uh, as Senator Matangi said, it is not time to pop uh, bottles of wine open. Yeah. It's not time for celebration. Things are tough. Uh, when I talked just a few minutes ago about uh, the post-COVID traumatic uh, syndrome that is happening now, if I may name it that, I got a message from a, a journalist who said that he's currently in a psychiatric ward post-COVID. And then I got another message from a senior professor in this country, in sciences, who says he's cured but even in his mind as he watches this show, he says things are not as they were before in his life. So it's something that we really need to embrace. Yeah. Uh, not to embrace, I mean need, need to, to work on. <coughs> we don't just wait until that. it becomes a crisis. Yeah. Number two is, uh, well, Otiendo Molo, next time you wine and dine with uh, your party leader, you may want to ask him which particular SMS of the many you've sent him uh, really made him uh, unhappy. Because as I said, I believe a decision could not have been made 
without trailer knowing. Number three is that uh, Suluhu uh, came, we're very happy. But it's a lesson to us. Yeah. She comes from a very small ethnic group, uh, from a small island. Yeah. Yet she's the president of Tanzania. Uh, Jakaya Kikwete, former president, said comes from a very small group. Because in Tanzania, it's not about your tribe. It's not about kingpins. You're not told what is your base, your tribal base. Yet your base is the people who support you because of your ideas and logic and ability to do development. Yeah. And that's where Kenya needs to go. We need leaders who are not uh, leaders because they carry a tribe behind them, yeah. but because they can change this country for the better. And uh, finally, uh, we didn't talk about it, but about the judiciary, I want <coughs> to congratulate uh, Justice Oko for mm -hmm. his appointment okay. and to say and to remind the judiciary that it is very important. What he said, we need to fund the judiciary, yeah. but Kenyans just want several things. We just want fairness. I want to go to court and feel that it doesn't matter who I am the judgment will be fair. And if I lose, I did not lose because the judge was talked to. It's maybe because I deserve to lose or I did not have a good lawyer. Yeah. Fairness is what can Kenyans want. A fair judicial system. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Trevor. Uh, I think uh, my, uh, my closing remarks, uh, I'll, I'll pick it from my wish list. <laughs> you know, my personal wish list yeah. for, for, for what I believe you know this this country should look like and and uh, that's based on 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 um, the discussion we've, we've had today uh, trevor because um you know in my mind i always ask myself after a discussion like the one we've had today how is it and why does it our politics and politicians uh, way of doing things daily why doesn't it align mm -hmm. with, with 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 the wishes of the people of this country why doesn't it align with how we are seen and perceived by other countries because uh, you know for example like the d discussion we've had about uh, president Suluhu and what he said to us really is is supposed to be a mirror of how other people see us when you listen to kenyans on the street their wish and their will is for them to be governed and led well and that is why they go willingly so early in the morning to vote as in in long queues and because they want to see a better country you know uh, and, and and that's why i said i'll pick it for my wish list uh, because i always ask myself why can't we, as political leaders, then align with that, 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 that vision, that, yeah. that, that need for our people, and how we are perceived, yeah. then to come up with policies, plan, and a leadership uh, roadmap that will grow this country to high heights, so that we can stop talking about uh, you know, giants like Singapore and Korea who are with us many years ago and who have left us uh, still in the wilderness. Yeah. And, and that's what I would be saying um, as, I, as I wind up, Trevor, that... Um, I believe as a country right now what we should be addressing ourselves is a proper recovery plan for our people yeah. after the ravages of corona, not only to the body yeah. and to the life of Kenyans, but to the uh, economic well-being, to the, to, to the kitty that feeds our people, yeah. to, to, to the cries that our people are, are, are having right now, that they are, they are not able to put bread on the table. Okay. And, and I believe that our thinking now, yeah. collectively, must be aligned as to how are we going to put our people where they were before yeah. and give them the opportunity to, 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 to earn a living and okay. make a living and get, get uh, re-employed and create jobs. All right. So I, 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 I hope that uh, we can start thinking that yeah. way as leaders and, and, and start on a roadmap okay. that will move this country forward. All right, Otina Mulo, where will the vicissitudes of politics take you <laughs> as you close? My closing remarks, um, again, like my colleagues relate to the reality of COVID. Uh, it is now clear that COVID is not about to disappear. And therefore, we must plan our lives with that reality. Whatever uh, uh, we are planning, especially in our political life and in our democratic practices. And that leads me to the issue of the IBC. First, as Kenyans, we need to take a, a very close look at the process already going on of appointing four new commissioners. Yeah. Because we have had the last three or four cycles of, of elections. Mm -hmm. Somehow, we always have issues mm -hmm. with the commission. Yeah. So let us uh, pay a keen attention to that. Secondly, let us also pay keen attention to what the IBC is doing. Uh, a few weeks ago, they advertised for tenders for the new technology, for election mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. yeah. And other than the fact that they advertised for those tenders, Absolutely. no one is talking about it. And yet, that is, like at the last election, that was the core of the problem. Mm -hmm. If we don't pay a keen attention to that, we will still end up with that circle of problematic elections. Thirdly, 
yeah. is the need for the IBC to advertise and continue registration. I am aware that registration is going on quietly, but very quietly. I think with observance of COVID protocols, mm -hmm. the IBC should keep encouraging Kenyans and announce mm -hmm. yeah. that registration, continuous voter registration is actually open so that people know. Okay. But, and lastly, which goes with that, the national government should also up its games. I, I just tried this in one of my wards, uh, in fact, just one uh, sublocation, when I asked um, the, the, the registrar of persons to just come and, uh, and, and I sponsored some sort of drive. And the number of young people who came for the ID was just unbelievable. Yeah. And I believe it's a problem mm. everywhere throughout the nation. Mm -hmm. the ne the, to get the benefits of democracy, anyone who is of voting age should be given the opportunity to vote. Right. And you cannot get that opportunity if you're not registered. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage mm -hmm. national government, IABC, that with the reality of COVID times, let us do what we need to do to promote democracy. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for making time this morning. Dr. Tienda Molo, Rarieda MP, and former Vice Chair Jay Lack, Dr. Kimani Mumatangi, <laughs> Kiambu, Senator Majority Group Chair. I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Samson Chirarike. Former. <laughs> and, and, and Dr. Alfred Mutua Machakos Gamara. Thank you so much. And thank you all for your feedback. We're taking a quick break here on Daybreak. When you come back, Willis Raburu is cooking. Right? See you in just a bit.